Today we're going to go a little bit further in our process of tooling you up to learn PLCs using the Micro 800. In the first half a dozen lectures, we talked about the lay of the land, so to speak, with sensors, with controllers, ladder logic diagrams, etc. We even discussed how to build your own hardware learning station. The next thing that we did most recently was we talked about getting your hands on the tools, the software tools, to work with Micro 800 controllers, specifically Connected Components Workbench and RS Lynx Classic Lite. The next step is either to connect up to your hardware controller or to work with a simulator. We're going to do the simulator first and make sure everyone's established with the simulator because you can do the course without hardware. As long as you have the software, which is basically free, your laptop, you have the manual, and you can watch the lectures. So right now what we're going to do is we're going to consider what is a simulator. Now, there's a difference between an emulator and a simulator. With the Micrologix 1000, 1100, or with MicroStarter Lite or MicroStarter, there is a emulator, 500 emulate. It emulates the processor. That's all it does. It does not simulate a controller. Remember, a controller is made up of a processor and I.O. interfaces. A controller is a processor and the I.O. interfaces together. An emulator only emulates the processor. That being said, you can go online with the emulator and you can toggle bits with your mouse on and off. But there is no I.O. to work with. A simulator actually simulates a complete controller, processor, and I.O. Now the LC5048 I.O. simulator has 48 I.O. that you can simulate and you can toggle you're not right clicking and toggling bits. You're just single clicking on the screw terminals on the image of that controller and it will simulate an exact controller just as if it's out there and powered up even when your laptop's not on. Now, when you turn your laptop off, it's gone. But when you go back in and open it back up, it goes right back to how it looked when you shut it down. So let's consider what is a simulator. What's the difference between a simulator and an emulator? What is the Micro 800 simulator? Well, really we need to answer first what is a Micro 800 before we can say what a Micro 800 simulator is. So let's take the story of two computers, a big one and a little one. The big one is your personal computer. It has volatile RAM that's maintained with, from your power supply. I show a hard drive, but that could be floppy disk, USB jump drive, you name it. When you are going to run your software, you're going to open it from the hard drive into RAM, your workspace on the computer. Then our little computer over there, which has battery-backed RAM, is the PLC. No keyboard, no digitizer, you know, mouse, no monitor. It's just a processor with some RAM. Now we also know that this processor is connected electrically through a backplane, through a bus, data bus and a control bus, to I.O. modules. We're not showing them here to keep this simple. So the first piece of software that you open is RS Lynx. RS Lynx is a driver manager for your COM ports. And your PLC will have COM ports and your computer will have COM ports. I show the PLC with two because that's very typical. If it were a control logix, you have one port on the front and the back connector that plugs into the back plane is also a COM port. Most PLCs have two COM ports. The Micro 810 only has one COM port. So the Micro 810 is very deficient in capability. So typically we like to recommend the 820 and up. Back to our story. To these COM ports then we have to add a cable. And the cable has to match the connectors on both ends. We've got RS Lynx open. That's a driver manager. The drivers in RS Lynx manage the electronics for these three different COM ports. 
and we'll say one's RS-232, one's Ethernet, and one is, it could be DH45 or USB. RS Links has to have drivers to manage the COM ports on your computer. They don't manage anything on your PLC, only to get the data out through a COM port, through a cable to your PLC, and then to read data back in. And when you set up RS links, you're going to have to set up the COM port. Now the RS-232 setup is strictly baud rate, air checking for connected components workbench, which is what we're talking about today. It'll look something like this. Now this is just a little screen capture from up in the corner of CCW. Now notice that there's a button that says disconnect. That means that right now the screen capture was of a processor or an online image of the processor in CCW. And if you click on that button, then it will disconnect. And then once you're disconnected, that button will say connect. So ignore that. Look at the path and notice the two little symbols to the right. It, one is supposed to look like a eraser, the one on the far left, and then the other one's supposed to look like a pen so you can edit. We're right now just going to point out and say there's the path that's set up in RS Links. That's the driver. The driver is set up to connect between CCW and that blue COM port through the cable out to the blue COM port on the PLC. Then you open up CCW, Connected Components Workbench. You create a project and once you have a project created, I just threw in a rung of logic here. You're going to download that to the PLC through the device driver to the RAM in the PLC. So notice that the project goes from RAM in the PC to RAM in the PLC. This is conventional. And by the way, there is no such thing as an online program. You can be on, in the online programming mode, which means that you can edit certain things in the controller in the run mode. But the project always resides offline. When you're looking at ladder logic, you can only look at that in the offline project. But that ladder logic is animated by the data in the PLC RAM. So the only information that comes from the PLC up to the project in CCW when you're online or any software for that matter, RS Logics, is the state of the memory locations. That's what animates the dead graphics on your screen when you're looking at the program and you say you're online. It's not an online program. You're monitoring the program online, but what you're looking at on the screen is dead graphics that is animated with colors and highlights based on the state of the memory locations. Let's consider no PLC. The only thing that we eliminated was RAM. We eliminated some RAM in a sense. Now remember, the processor is also, also connected to I.O. So if we eliminate the controller, the PLC, not only do we eliminate the RAM, but we eliminate the I.O. The simulator is something that we open in the project for CCW. And then we download the project into the simulator. So the piece of RAM that we added at the bottom there is really no different than the piece of RAM that was in that PLC. It's just a piece of RAM. The CCW up above, it doesn't know that it downloaded to that piece of RAM in the exact same random access memory. In other words, when you open up the simulator, it sets aside part of unused RAM for the simulator. At, at this point, it's not turned on. Instantiated, created an instance of the simulator but you haven't turned it on and you haven't done anything with it. So at this point, what you are looking at is you are looking at the processor's RAM with no I.O. And we won't be able to add any I.O. because you can't add I.O. to your personal computer. That about covers what is a simulator, comparing it to a real controller. In the next lecture, we're going to work more with the simulator. We'll see you then.